After what has been an emotional day, the last iron is now leaving Blast Furnace 5 behind us. Operations at the furnace have been safely brought to a close. To talk us through the events today, I'm joined by Dean Cartwright, Works Operations Manager for Cork Cinder and Iron, and Paul Evans, Project Campaigns Manager. Dean, first of all, if I turn to you, um, as I said, it has been an emotional day, a difficult day for many people, but today this seems to have gone very smoothly and according to plan. Yeah, I mean, it's bittersweet, isn't it? It's bittersweet. It, I couldn't have asked for better. I did, it was never a question about whether this was going to happen. It was always a question about how it would happen. And I think, you know, credit to Paul and the team, it's gone as well as anybody could have asked for. We've seen the, the last of the operation finish and it's done safely, um, textbook fashion, to be honest, absolutely textbook fashion. So I'm extremely proud of Paul and the team. They've done a superb job. And this, this, this is not something that happens by accident. There's a huge amount of meticulous planning that's gone on for months behind the scenes. Talk us through some of that planning that has happened behind the scenes, Dean. Yeah, well, well Paul will have the detail, but Paul's had a you know significant number of people working on this for many, many, many months. Um, we talked earlier in the week about the pre-blowdown stop and extra instrumentation that was needed. Again, that's really the tip of the iceberg. Um, but it was that preparation and that extra instrumentation and the extra sort of telemetry that we have on the furnace that allowed this to be such a successful blowdown and, 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 and it was and it all came together. I mean, it's very rare that you don't have any glitches and, and there were a few in the background, but uh, the team dealt with them so professionally, calm, collected manner and, and you know, obviously the fruits of all of that is seen now, um, it, all the right choices were made, superb job. Uh, Paul, if I come to you, um, talking to many of the team members throughout the day here today, one of the things that become really clear to me is that, that sense of camaraderie, that sense of spirit, that team spirit, that, that ethos of one family, if you want, is really, really strong here. Um, lift the lid on that a little bit for us, Paul. Tell us a little bit about the special bond that exists between people who work on Blast Furnace 5. Yeah, I think it's key to get that across who. I, mean, I stand here today and represent a team. There is, without any doubt in my mind, we could not have executed this to plan safely without that team. And I don't just mean the team, because we talk a lot about internal target employees. Let's not forget the, the contract, the support employees as well, um, that have supported and engaged in this project. That as a third generation iron maker, man and boy, I've grown up with a lot of these um, companies as well. So you know, as we enter into a, what I, I believe is a period of mourning, and um, we, we're feeling the same pain that our colleagues in more of core governments felt already, um, our contractor partners will be feeling that pain as well too. Um, and, and I've just left the control room <coughs> where I think there's around 15,000 man hours of planning with the teams that have gone into this. And to see that executed professionally and safely to plan is hugely rewarding. Um, and and I, can't, I can't overemphasize that how proud I feel. One, to have done this for Dean and the department on behalf of the team, but also how proud I am of that team. I'm immensely proud. Um, and it's still pretty raw, really raw and emotional. Um, and yeah, and I, I think we're going we're gonna to mourn this period for a while. Uh, you mentioned you know, the huge amount of, of hours that are going to the planning for today and it's all gone exceptionally well as, as we've spoken about already um, but this isn't the end of the story for Blast Furnace 5 is it? The, the work in, in some respects almost starts now. Yeah so we're, we're obviously starting the, the hurting process too, and it's going to get even more painful for us as, as we start the, the make safe period for 5 in similar fashion to the other areas we have to do this again so we have to start the planning for number four as well because we have to go through all this planning um, and emotion and execution safely again for bf4 um, and i'll add after that once bf4 goes to that we have to do the same again for the third time for gci and raw mat so this is an extremely painful period for all of us here at iron making and we've got to do it again and again. Painful, emotional, difficult, as you said, Paul, but I get the sense that 
the team here will approach it with 100% professionalism, as they always have done, always had done every second, every minute to this stage. Yeah, you know, we're given this massive project of decommissioning. You know, Dean's got to run a plant. He's got to release people for decommissioning. And I'm, I'm immensely proud and surprised at the amount of people that have the day job to keep the operation going safely, but also over and above wanted to support this initiative, wanted to be a part of it, and feel, feel a sense of pride that, that they contributed to, for me, what is something that, that goes down in history. You know, this plant came into operation in '56. It's done, Dean mentioned yesterday, 38 million tonnes. It's got its own history, some good, some bad. Um, but yeah, the, the sense of the people that work here wanted to be a part of this and be a part of the history. So yeah, I'm immensely proud, immensely proud of them. Uh, and Dean, if I just come to you finally, um, you know, we've spoken a lot about the emotion of the day, difficult day, as you mentioned, um, you know, mixed emotions for, for many, many people here today. Yeah. But we mustn't forget, this is also the start of the next journey for us in terms of steelmaking and the green steelmaking future and the fact that the, the steelmaking will be here for a future generation of future steelmakers. Yeah, it's, it, it probably is the first of the main milestones, really, as, as we go along that journey. So this furnace came off today, number four furnace, plant to come off at the end of September, and, and then really the dominoes will all fall. Um, and it, and it is a significant moment in that transition as we transition from conventional iron making through blast furnaces through to the EAF process and the greener steel. It's a significant part of the journey. There's still a bridge, quite a big bridge to get us there. Um, but I would hope that, like Paul talks about, you know, it, it's a family affair on the furnaces. It's an iron making family affair. I, I would hope that that family affair is there for the future generations and it's associated with the EAF uh, steel making. I think that opportunity is really important to reward everybody who's given the dedication. Well it's, it's been an absolute privilege to be here today. It's a, it's a piece of history, it's another significant major milestone in history of steel making here in the UK. Um, Dean, Paul, thank you both so much for having us today. We'll catch you up again soon.